Bohr models are useful for looking at the arrangement of electrons in an atom. Let's look at an example. Magnesium, capital M little g, is on the periodic table as a neutral element and it has 12 protons and an atomic mass of 24.3. Therefore, the number of neutrons would be 24 subtract 12, which happens to be 12. Inside the nucleus, we have 12 protons and 12 neutrons. Now the electrons can be represented in shells. There are three shells showing here. The first shell fills up with two electrons. The second shell fills up with at most eight electrons. And the third shell fills up with eight electrons. And the fourth shell fills up with at most 18 electrons. But the periodic table doesn't show electrons. We have to assume that because there are 12 protons, for a neutral atom, we would have 12 electrons. We would fill up the shells with electrons based on this configuration. So two electrons go in the first shell, at most eight go in the second one, we fill them up as singles first and then pair them up to make the eight. So now we've used up 10. And the last shell, we don't need all eight spots, we just need two more. There's one and two. First shell fills up two, second shell fills up eight, and third shell, two left over. The electrons on the outside shell are called valence electrons. The valence electrons determine the physical and chemical properties of an element. Magnesium doesn't like to stay neutral. In fact, these two valence electrons make magnesium quite unstable. Magnesium will give up the two electrons and become an ion, a positive ion. We can draw a Bohr model for the ion as well. So the Mg ion will have a two plus because two electrons are lost. The number of protons stays the same. The number of neutrons stays the same in the nucleus. And two of these electrons are lost. The magnesium 2 plus ion looks like this. The outer shell will be full after the two electrons are lost. The magnesium ion then doesn't have 12 electrons. It actually has 10 electrons. How about chlorine? Chlorine on the periodic table, chlorine has 17 protons and atomic mass of 35.5. We have 17 protons and atomic mass is 35.5 units. We would round that to 36 and subtract 17, which gives us 19 neutrons. We assume that chlorine is neutral. Because it's neutral, the chlorine atom will have 17 electrons. So remember the shells fill up two in the first shell, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and we're done. So there's an empty space here. The chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. So we use 2, 8, and 7, and therefore we have 7 valence electrons. Chlorine is not stable as a neutral atom. Chlorine gains an electron to become more stable. The chlorine ion has a negative charge. The Bohr model diagram needs a negative charge. The protons has not changed, neutrons has not changed, but the electrons have. Now, we don't have 17 electrons, we actually have 18 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and there's the eighteenth electron which was gained. We have a chlorine atom and we have the ion which we call chloride for nonmetals. Nicely done.